now to the analysis of Shields and Brooks. That is syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. Hello to both of you. Uh, we meet just uh, a matter of hours, Mark, since the president announced that he was going to go along uh, with a democratic plan in the short term just to get the government back open. But we just heard, you know, Omna speaking to these two, the federal employee, uh, Brad Hufford, uh, Lawana Russell, who's a contractor. You get a sense that this really did harm people. It, the 35 days, it wasn't just a blip. It was something that affected people's lives. Oh, I, I don't think there's any question, Judy, and, and particularly uh, with the move uh, pushed by Vice President Cheney, but endorsed by Republicans and not totally resisted by Democrats to privatize by contract so many uh, federal responsibilities. And uh, these people are not federal employees. They are not going to be reimbursed for the time off. Um, uh, the time off, the, the, the time out of work. And uh, so I think, you know, I think it's being felt everywhere. And it was capped by Wilbur Ross, the Secretary of Commerce, absolutely insensitive remarks about, you know, why don't you just take a loan? I mean, would it get a payday loan? How about that? That's a pretty good deal. Uh, and if uh, they dismantle the Consumer Protection Agency anymore under Mick Mulvaney, it'll even be probably 35% a week interest. Uh, it, uh, so, you know, it, it just, it, it, it does. It hurts and there's pain all the way around. Uh, David, what about that? And we just heard uh, Ms. Russell say at the end, you know, if nothing else, maybe the public gets a little bit of an education about what the federal government means. Yeah, I'm, I'm more on the conservative side, not always a fan of gigantic government, but always been an admirer of federal workers. Uh, when you get inside these agencies, uh, you see how good and how high quality the people are. I had a chance to talk to Brad uh, backstage, and he's traveling a lot for FEMA, going to where people are in need, uh, inconveniencing himself, living out of a suitcase uh, for government worker and for, for us, for the citizens, and those people really do sacrifice. I recommend a book by Michael Lewis or a podcast by Michael Lewis on the National Weather Service. And you see from this podcast, which you can get on Audible, not to do an ad for Michael, but uh, uh, how fanatical they are about trying to get the weather forecast correctly. <laughs> and they're making public sector incomes. Uh, but these people are generally, whether you like big government or small government, the people who do this work are dedicated to that work. Makes a difference. Well, let's talk about the, this agreement or temporary agreement, Mark. Three weeks, uh, no, no money in there for the border wall, but the president is right now saying, I want it, to, it's got to be in there or I'm not going to sign a, a permanent funding deal. Uh, uh, a very respected national Republican said to me this afternoon, everybody knows what happened. Uh, five weeks and the president got nothing. It was a cave. It was a total fold. Uh, I give uh, both Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer credit for not doing a victory dance in the end zone or spiking the ball today and being rather generous in their remarks. But uh, th this was a total, I mean, the president insisted and demanded uh, the money for the wall. It's not in it. He demanded uh, to speak to the nation from the House chamber, uh, the majestic historic setting. Uh, not the state capitol in Lansing or Charleston, West Virginia, that was offered to him. Uh, he didn't get it. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a total defeat for him. And believe me, Judy, there will not be the will among Republicans in three weeks mm. to go back and do this again. Once it's opened, it's going to be opened. And what does that mean, David? What yeah, I agree with that totally. Uh, it's, it was a total victory. I mean, it's so unfair. Mark's football team is going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> the Democrats have this big triumph. Uh, he paid his dues in years past as a sports, Boston sports fan. But it is a total, uh, a total victory for the Democrats. Uh, I turned on some conservative talk radio, uh, the Sean Hannity show this afternoon. And Sean was trying to defend it, but his callers were having none of it. Uh, they thought this is a collapse, this is a defeat, we're really downhearted. Uh, and they understood what happened, that the poll ratings were just terrible. Uh, his poll ratings have dropped to 37%. I saw one poll today, 34%, which is an all-time low. Uh, and now they're likely to go a little lower, by the way, because now his base is a little upset with him. And That's you think three weeks in advance, I would say this to federal workers, the Democrats are feeling great about themselves. If Donald Trump wants to bring this on again, they're happy. If the, the Republicans are miserable, they never want to come back to where they are right now. And so the odds that we will have another shutdown strike me as low, uh, and it would be, for Trump it would be suicidally low mm -hmm. to just to try this again. So, but, but, but he's sticking. I mean, Mark, he, the president right now is saying, I'm going to have money for the wall. 
Uh, he, no, I, he is saying that. I, I, just to pick up on one point that David made, uh, Marquette University poll, which is a respected poll in Wisconsin, uh, reported that uh, not only simply that 29 percent supported the shutdown and 66 percent opposed it, but the important question came out this week, the results, 27 percent would definitely vote to reelect Donald Trump. 27 percent and 49 percent would definitely vote for anybody else. And this is a and state so, he won. And th th this is a state that he carried. Right. And this is a state where yesterday Ron Johnson, the Republican senator, chastised and publicly scolded the Republican Senate leader, Mitch McConnell, for allowing this to happen. So if one wants to see how things do do develop here in Washington and that we do listen to the people back home. I think this is a case of the Republicans listening to the people back home. McConnell's whole affect today was a masterpiece in I have nothing to do with this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, that happened in some other universe. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't me. Uh, yeah. And so he, the, nobody wants to be associated with this. And but the, we, the other thing, Judy, he had no next move. I mean, Donald yeah. Trump, the president. I mean, it's true. It's Did true. he have an alternative? He had no alternative. And, and yeah. it, what's remarkable is the difference in real estate, in, in real estate, you know, to respect to the profession, you know, I tell David, oh, no, we just had the, we had the plumbing done a year and a half ago, although the roof's in great shape, because it's, it's a one-to-off deal. I mean, if it isn't David, then I'm doing with Mr. X, okay? In politics, your word is the coin of the realm. That's what the one thing you have. And if you'd seen the same colleagues every day, and if the word gets out, that Shields can't be trusted, that Shields folds, that Shields do doesn't keep his word, then you're dead, you're, you're dead meat in a, in a legislative body. No one's going to trust you. And Donald Trump doesn't understand that. He comes out of real estate, you do it, you cut the deal, then you move on. But now he's got the same people he's dealing with. And part of Mitch McConnell's timidity beyond national caution was right. he was terrified. He knew exactly what Trump had broken his word just in December. But he's still the president, David. Uh, he's still got a Republican Senate. Right. I'm, but, you know, I'm not sure how many of them will want to walk in any difficult confrontation with him. And the, just the, as Mark said, the, it's always great to declare a shutdown because you get that first burst of, oh, yeah, we're really standing up. But then you have to have step two, three, four, five, and you have to have a path to victory. Mm -hmm. And in every government shutdown, from the Ted Cruz one to this one, they've never had a path to get there. And it's always hurt the size that instigated it. Let's talk about the other big story today, Mark, uh, David, and that is Roger Stone, uh, the president's longtime friend, confidant. Uh, we've been expecting this would happen, but today, this early this morning, the FBI agent showed up at his house in Florida, uh, with apparently with guns drawn, banging on the door, knocking on the door, uh, and he's been indicted now on a number of charges, perjury, obstruction uh, of justice. Um, where are we in this Mueller investigation? There's still so much we do not know. Well, this is an awful lot I don't know. I do know Roger Stone. I've had the uh, distinct, uh, if unique, uh, pleasure of having known Roger Stone since 1971, uh, which is 48 years. Uh, Roger has, uh, was always a political idealist. He was working then for Richard Nixon, doing dirty tricks at the age of 20. Um, and uh, Roger passed through the idealistic stage sometime around <laughs> recess in the second grade in October uh, and got over it in a hell of a hurry and has been there ever since. I thought the most interesting thing to me today was the subtlety of Roger's uh, I won't, uh, I'll never turn on my oldest, one of my oldest and dearest friends. Um, and all I can think of, uh, pardon me, boy, is this will you get a presidential pardon? Uh, that's that, that's mm -hmm. what it struck me. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's serious. And I, I, it, when we're talking about as earlier in the segment, uh, Judy, with uh, Yamish and uh, Lisa, I mean, when you get the president's personal attorney, the de national security advisor, yeah. the campaign manager, the deputy campaign manager, old dear friend crony, and Roger's, Roger's uh, idol was Roy Cohn. And... Uh, Boy, you've got to say he's been faithful to him. <laughs> David, where, where are, what are we left with? Well, uh, I mean, we one, one, you have to bow down in, in admiration for the audacity of his lying. Uh, one of the things he told the House uh, committee was that he'd never had any contact ever in text or email with this guy, Randy Credico, this talk show host. Yeah. And he had texted him 30 times that day. <laughs> So and most people, there are a lot of people who are dishonest, but that's super perjury. That's uber perjury. Um, and so he is what he is. As for the larger, where this takes us in the, in the investigation, I'm not sure where it takes us. Uh, why would the Trump White House be trying to get information out of, ran, out, of, out of Stone, trying to talk to some talk show hosts, trying to talk to WikiLeaks, 
trying to talk to Russia if they actually had a channel to Russia. Right. So the, uh, the whole idea that uh, this alleged the collusion, campaign. the campaign, the campaign. sorry, yeah. sorry, yeah. that there's some channel to Russia and that there are masterminds who somehow colluded with Russia to affect the election. First, the other subject we saw today, I don't think they're masterminds. And second, why are they taking this back route to try to beg for information if they have the channel? And so it may be they're just a bunch of bumblers who did a lot of bad and illegal stuff, but the big collusion story, that may not be the case, though we don't know. Or, the, or that this was the channel, but it was just a, a bifurcated channel that it's went a, in different directions. Yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, many different avenues in. I mean, that, uh, that's it. I mean, but, I, you know, it, it, it's serious stuff. Make no mistake about it. And, uh, and the president, the president, is he, can he literally say today, the White House said today, this has nothing to do with us, uh, that this happened, uh, we're, we see it, but it didn't touch anybody in the White House. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it goes through the litany, Judy, of the people close to the president who have already uh, either pleaded guilty or, you know, it, it, it becomes circumstantial. I mean, if I, if I go to sleep tonight and the ground is bare and I wake up tomorrow and there's six inches of snow, but I didn't see it snow, it's pretty strong evidence that there was snow. It snowed overnight. And, you know, I, I, I start to look at the accumulation of the blizzard of indictments. That's a bad metaphor, isn't it? But we, uh, but just quickly, David, uh, we we uh, we wait. We don't know. There's so much that we still do not know. And, and it's consuming the presidency. And and when the House Investigatory Committee's really get going, that will completely consume what is left of an organization in the White House. I will say this, Judy. He took on a San Francisco Democrat and found out that Nancy Pelosi had steel in her spine. That's the president. They did. Mark Shields, David Brooks. Thank you. Thank you.